welcome to a short video going over some basics of meiosis, which is the steps that organisms use to make sperm and egg to undergo sexual reproduction. In a nutshell, meiosis looks a lot like mitosis. There's prophase, there's metaphase, there's anaphase, there's telophase, and then there's cytokinesis, but there are two rounds of it. And the reason why is when we initially have our diploid cell, that has two copies of DNA, one for mom and one from dad, and we duplicate it, we do something a little bit different in meiosis one. The big thing that will be done differently is we line up paternal and maternal chromosomes as pairs of two rather than just individual chromos chromosomes. And when we get into meiosis two, that's gonna be where we separate our sister chromatids. And the result of this, as we model out in class, will be cells, that are haploid, not diploid, that contain only one of two copies of mom or dad's DNA. Um, at the end of mitosis, you had cells that were still diploid. They had mom and dad's DNA. Um, in this uh, process, um, haploid means there's only one copy of the chromosome. So we're gonna get into some key terms and definitions and some ideas to get you started. A lot of this we'll be practicing and doing in class with an activity. So let's talk about some of the first basic intro to this um, next step in our genetic unit. The first is what is a gene? Um, it's really important to understand genes because when you're talking about chromosomes, different chromosomes contain different genes and different types of chromosomes will have different versions of those genes. So a definition of a gene is just a specific region of DNA that codes for a protein or part of a protein. And this is important because each gene has to be inherited through fertilization, and without that gene, organisms are unable to make that protein. So for example, if both of your parents have traits or genes that make them lactose intolerant, they're also going to inherit an allele or a gene that makes you lactose intolerant because you can't make the protein lactase. So when we look at our chromosomes, here's our sister chromatids for a duplicated pair of chromosomes. A gene is just gonna be a piece of information somewhere on that chromosome. Now, a loci or locus is that region or location of a gene on a chromosome. So where specifically are we finding it? The reason why we care about location or loci is that there are 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes in your um, cells. 23 pairs means that in each pair you have one chromosome from mom, one chromosome from dad. Each of those contains separate um, the thousands of discrete genes, which can be turned on or off in certain cells or in certain locations or in certain environments. Understanding the location of a gene is really important for understanding its structure, its function, and why that gene is contributing to a certain process in our cell. Now, alleles are very subtle changes or variations in a gene. Think there versus they are. Uh, the meaning is the same, but the underlining structure is a little bit different, which is why we might get subtle differences in how we interpret it. With alleles, we're thinking about a specific gene and variations within that gene. For example, you have alleles for genes that code for your eye color that might code for brown, blue, green, um, etc. And these differences in the traits are based off of coding errors or changes in the DNA. So you might find two genes, or you might find one gene for eye color in mom's DNA that you got that codes for brown eyes. And you have your same chromosome, same gene from dad, and it codes for blue eyes. The end result might be you excess brown eyes or blue eyes, but the reason why you have two alleles for two different variations of a trait is that you're diploid. So here's a good way of thinking about loci and gene and traits. Diploid, and here's what we mean, by, here what, here's what I mean by talking about allele versus gene versus locus. Alleles are variations, locus is the location, the gene is the specific trait that we're making, and then here's a pair of homologous chromosomes. White from one individual, purple from another individual. This is the DNA that you have. And as this is all pointing to, we're diploid. 
Um, all of our cells contain two copies of each chromosome. Human have, 20, have 23 pairs, which is why we have 46 chromosomes. And that's really important because each pair is made up of a mom and dad's DNA. And we use those two copies for diversity and traits, safety and traits, having a backup copy, making variations within a trait. It allows us to have more organisms in each generation express some level of individuality within phenotypes or traits or physical characteristics. And here we can see all 23 pairs of our um, chromosomes. Chromosomes 1 through 22 are non-sex-based chromosomes, and then you can either be XY or XX based on your biological sex. Um, and there's still variations within um, these chromosomal combinations that can code for more than just XY or XX. So some other field cap words that we have to talk about, haploid, it's a cell that has one copy of each chromosome. This could be M or F. Um, it's not M and F in terms of maternal or paternal characteristics. Um, a haploid cell within humans is destined to fuse with another haploid cell to make a diploid cell. The result is going to be a unique combination of genetic material. Haploid cells in humans are sperm and eggs. So when we have an egg with mom's DNA and sperm with dad's DNA, those two will fuse to make a diploid zygote, which will eventually have both sets of DNA come together to make a cell that looks like all the cells in our body. Now, homologous chromosomes, as I've mentioned before, are just a pair of identical chromosomes made up of one mom and one dad, maternal and paternal sets of DNA, and they contain identical genes, but often different alleles, depending on the parental genes that you inherit. For example, your mom might have copies of blonde hair, and your dad might have red hair in terms of those alleles. So when we look at them, here's paternal, here's maternal chromosomes, we would compare the genes and the alleles on these chromosomes to better understand what traits you have. We still call duplicated chromosomes sister chromatids. So this is one chromosome duplicated with sister chromatids. And this is another duplicated chromosome with two sister chromatids. I have four chromatids, two chromosomes, and there's two copies of each chromosome. A gamete is just going to be our definition of a haploid cell, sperm or egg, with one complete set of chromosomes. And a sperm is really always going to be the gamete that determines sex. Most biological males are an X and a Y for the sex chromosomes in their cells. Females are usually double X. So the combination of sperm and egg will determine the biological sex of an offspring. And then finally, what are the differences between sex and autosomal chromosomes? The first 22 pairs, which I showed on the last slide, are what we call autosomal. They don't determine biological sex. X and Y do code for biological sex, and they also code for some traits not necessarily related to sex. Um, sometimes you can inherit a third chromosome for any of these 23 pairs. That usually results in very atypical or abnormal traits when we look at individuals that inherit it. So again, here is meiosis 1 and here's meiosis 2. We're going to line up our maternal and paternal homologous chromosomes duplicated copies of each, but again, eye color, eye color, hair color, hair color, hairy knuckles, non-hairy knuckles. We split up the homologous chromosomes into two daughter cells that are haploid because they only contain either mom or dad's DNA. And then we do meiosis two where we split up the sister chromatids to make four copies of gametes that contain mom and or dad DNA but there's not mom and dad DNA. Hope this has been helpful. Um, the main importance is that you are writing down these definitions, listening to my context, and thinking about explaining these words in your own language, in your own way, so you feel comfortable with them. Thanks, and have a good rest of your day.